What's going on guys, Achoo here bringing you a, another review on Dragon Ball Daima. And I gotta say this episode was pretty good. A lot of, uh, in my opinion, sitting around. But I also gotta take into account that this first, I guess the first three episodes are going to be kind of in like a movie setup. Because I know that in what's next month they're going to be having the first three episodes of Daima in dub. So it's gonna be flowing in like a movie. So I kind of get where they're going at with this few, the first few episodes. So this second one, we kind of see first and foremost, the realization that they've all become kids. And I love how everyone kind of reacts differently. Uh, we just kind of see some of the, most of the characters kind of stand around. The initial shock in Goku and Vegeta's face and Krillin. Poor Krillin, like, he was memed harder, in my opinion, in this episode, more than Yamcha has ever been, because he's like, oh no, I'm shrunken too, like, the fact that he's, like, wanting to draw attention to himself, and bring attention to everybody else, and Bulma just kind of slapping him back, like, you're short, you've always been short, you're gonna be, you're shorter than us, like, poor guy, man, Krillin is just something else, but someone that has enjoyed the fact that they're young again is Roshi. And who would have thunk it, man? After all this time, we understand why people have been comparing Goku and Saitama all this time. Because Master Roshi is Saitama. Like, I saw that and I initially thought that. And then I actually saw on social media how people were saying about, oh god, Master Roshi and One Punch Man, this is where he's been this entire time. And like, I love how a lot of us think the same way. It's just kind of crazy. But I didn't want to miss out on mentioning it. And like, this dude loved the fact that he was young. He's blowing kisses. He's being dapper. He's dressing up. He's he, he's just enjoying it. Like, And that's what you need to do. Someone else that was kind of enjoying it, and I think he was kind of a handsome guy back in the day, is none other than Mr. Satan. Like, seeing Mr. Satan was kind of fun. Seeing him talk a little bit. Ignored, but talking, and it was just fun. What was really messed up, in my opinion, is that the one person that really had it rough was Mr. Popo and Dende. Like, Dende is literally a baby. And Mr. Popo, despite being a kid, like, he's still very protective of Dende. And, like, who would have thought that Mr. Popo, after all these years, like, we're talking 30 plus years, that Mr. Popo actually has horns underneath his turban who would have thought that like that was just kind of wild for me to think and like fact is they take dende away from mr popo and i don't want to say it's a dumb move but they kidnapped a baby in order to prevent them from having dende around and possibly using the dragon balls to reverse the situation so it is funny though because I feel like it's a very much of a joke that M Mr. Toriyama gave to us in regards to like only allowing Goma to only have one wish. I think that, that was hilarious. And he gets the wish, he feels kind of dumb. He's like, I wish I would have used my other wish instead to have gotten the evil third eye and instead that didn't work. Uh, but we see that after the whole maneuvering around or realizing what's going on, we have Goku trying to fly. He cannot do it. And no one can. Uh, thankfully, Kibito's there. He's able to take them all back to the, the tower. And we have Popo explaining what's happened, saying that this guy, the guys that took him, looked a lot like uh, uh, Supreme Kai. Uh, Supreme Kai starts freaking out, he hears the name to get to, and he's just freaking out. And he starts thinking about, oh man, this is, this is something crazy. And we get more explanation in this episode too, where we find out that uh, also Neva was actually someone that Piccolo doesn't know personally, but knows of the legend of him, and that he was the only Namekian that was living in the demon realm to basically protect the Dragon Balls in that universe or in that realm. And it was kind of fun to hear that, you know? Uh, I love that Piccolo's involved in this and, you know, wanting to know all about it. Kibito, uh, I feel bad for in this episode. We saw him being like the messenger boy for Bulma, basically getting the food, and 
bringing them up there. And of course, Bulma being the genius that she is, you know, she's up there because she's having to examine the spacecraft that Supreme Kai actually got, you know, he had many years ago who had come from the demon realm to Earth, which is kind of, you know, well, at least to that universe, Universe 7, which is wild to think about. But we see that, you know, she investigates, can't really put much, you know, information into it. She's having a hard time figuring it out. But um, while all this is happening, Goku and Piccolo are trying to learn how to fly. Vegeta's trying to, like, meditate and seeing how he can, you know, master his ability as well, but he can't. Uh, but we have Goku going down. He talks to Korin, which is nice. Uh, Korin's like, yeah, I know what's, every, what's going on. He, he stayed the same age, which is kind of crazy. He is still the same age. And uh, he didn't get affected, which is great. And we have him go, uh, Goku going down to Master Roshi because he has his expanded stick or his uh, his Nyambo, I believe that's what's called. And luckily, he gets back in time because Glorio shows up. And thanks to Glorio showing up, Bulma gets some answers and is able to to do some more. But Glorio's there because he needs the help of Goku, and he wants to take down Goma. Of course, Supreme Kai joins in as well. And they're on their way. So, not a bad episode. I thought it was pretty fun. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, so stay safe, and I'll catch you all later.